These things have run flats in them. There's no bottom to this when you go through it. We roll into the station early morning. From here, it's an 80k cross-country run due north to the coast. Let's get this shell on the road. First port of call, mate. We've got to find this uh, water post, which is about 25 clicks ahead of us. And the GPS mark on it from uh, Bill. Uh, I checked the hole, mate, back there, and uh, he reckons. Uh, a couple of quick uh, direction for the mud back. So this, this fence line here, according to the map, is exactly on the Queensland Northern Territory border. And um, from our little uh, instructions or mud map from uh, Old Mate Bagot Station, Murray, he reckons um, five or six k's we're going to travel along this section here to find what is one of the existing water posts. Washout just here. Oh, we go, washout. A little creek that's on it. No, it's not too bad. The only one hell of a mission, this one, I can see it. I got a feeling in my bones. The track, we would don't drive on. Obviously, they don't do a lot of. A lot of maintenance on this fence, otherwise they'd be great in this road, grading it. But anyway, we're soon going to find out whether or not this is a do or die mission. You got something coming up up here, buddy? Like a series of gates or something? Yeah, you're right on my mark too. There it is there, Simon. Right Good. there, I can see it. That lone timber post. Just as well, because that gate's tight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave that shut. I'm coming down. Show it again. Look at that, survived bushfires and everything. Got black marks on it. Termites haven't eaten it no, yet. Ants are living in it, or have lived in it. Yeah, it'll be that termite good timber. Oh mate. You know, this was put in around that 1886 mark. 1886, mate, it's stood that long. No post hole uh, diggers on the back of no tractor there, and that was dug by hand and put in properly too. So the arrow, and 616. That means 616 mile from the corner. There you go. This is the starting point, mate. I was we, hoping we, to find this one. <laughs> we could put our plaque on that one, it'd be a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> Job done. <laughs> Now, the history behind this, this border, this imaginary line and this post, it's pretty cool, actually, because 616 miles that way is Popple's Corner. And it was Popple himself that tracked from Popple's Corner towards the Gulf. But he only got as far as 325 miles, and he had to pull out because due to going blind. Now, I don't know the whole story on it. The history books don't really tell us. But Wells, his second in charge, and another guy who headed the rest of the survey by the name of Carruthers, tracked on. And they surveyed it all the way to the Gulf of Carpentaria. And that was completed on September 29th, 1886. So this post here is one of the few remaining posts of the Queensland Northern Territory border that stood the test of time. We've got to try and forward our way around, manoeuvre our way around crossings and stuff like that, but try and stay as close to the border as we can. Alrighty, let's get across this creek crossing and see what we can find on the other side. Hey, uh, did I mention that uh, my mog has uh, 46 inch tyres? Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> So far, so good, mate. We're knocking the kilometres down. It's going to be long, and we'll be within 30 kilometres of the coast. Stay 
guys like this, I'll be happy. According to my van, buddy, you should have a creek coming up soon. And lo and behold, there it is. And there's no water in it. Yeah, I'm going to struggle big time getting up there. Chance in hell, dude. Yeah, I knew I had no chance. No way. What have you done? <laughs> yeah, I knew I was dreaming. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> but I have got that far. Drop some air out. That's a start. Where's the remote for the winch? I'll, um, I'll start winding that out for you at least. Thanks, Cobber. All right, do your thing. I already did that. Look where that got me. <laughs> just check, wash, wash the wheels off the ground. Just give the wheel bearings a quick check on the caravan, those back wheels. Feel all right? I feel good. Never miss an opportunity for maintenance. There you go. That's it. Here she goes. These winches have got some grunt, eh? <laughs> a lot of load on that winch, mate. That's a big caravan. Oh, oh. Run, boy, run. I know four-wheel drives. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go, so four-wheel drive, then full diff lock, first gear. Basically, that's about it. That's all you do with uni mods, and away we go. Come on, baby. And up we go. Go, baby. Yeah. Move out of my way. <laughs> I could go back and reverse it up there. Hey, did I tell you I got 46 inch tyres? Oh, and a portal axle you could pitch a 10 under? That didn't even like hesitate, did it? I'm pretty sure I didn't even mention that earlier. You haven't even let the tyres down yet. Oh, yeah, they're down to 40. 40? Yeah. Every now and again, I might drop them down to 18 if the going blah, gets. Blah, blah, all I get is If blah. the going gets really, blah, really blah, tough. Blah, blah. At the moment, it's not even tough. <laughs> G'day guys, this video is brought to you by Campos 4x4's Boss Air Tire Deflators, mate. This is Australia's number one tire deflator, without a doubt. It's so easy, I can't believe how easy it is. You grab them out, you make the setting on here to which whatever pressure you want to drop your tire to, lock her in, whack her on here, like that. And away it goes. Deflates all four tyres at once. I reckon by the time you get back around to the front, she'll be almost ready to go and you're off on the tracks. Anyway, if you want to check them out, so you go over to Campos 4x4's web store. They're available on there. Otherwise, have a look at the list. There could be a dealer around the corner from you guys. Anyway, that's enough mucking around. Let's get back to the video and back to the adventure. Hi. A nice early morning start. How far have we got on your map to the coast? I reckon we got about, it's going to be about 26 kilometres. What's the bet? We get very close to the edge and it's the landscape's going to give us a bit of a hurry up. Quite possibly, mate. You know what this country's like. Well, mate, we've got a nasty crossing here, lots of sand. Um, I reckon maybe you should sneak through first. All right, just coming down your left hand side now, mate. Hopefully, the back. Touch. Trailer. Oh, hold there. It's good, all good. You gonna wait there in case I get stuck on this side? Yeah, mate, I'll wait here in the middle. Come on, baby. Hey. Okay, we're in. Now we just gotta get out. Big 46 inch tires of yours. Uh, yes. I'll just get I'll get it into third gear and get a little bit of momentum. Come on, baby! Come so on, it doesn't always count, mate. You're gonna have to let some air out. I'm just gonna get a little bit of traction in a second. It's gonna make it easy for me now. 
You tracked her in that thing. Yeah, I'm just flattening the sand out for you. Look at that. Did you just see that? I did. Yeah, the key with the Unimog, watching you go and doing the speed thing. Yeah, it's not speed you want out of the Unimog. No, it just seems to tract her. Hey, um, do you want me to turn around and just go straight off mine winch? Yeah, let's do that, eh? So rather than Simon scratching and carrying on through there, he can come as far as he can where he stops. We'll get the big winch out and just yank him up. All right, buddy. Bring her on through. You know, you can do it, you're 46 inch dollars! <laughs> Did you make me get the winch out for nothing? <laughs> oh, how good is that? I don't need no freaking great Unimog winch. A good old Maxi. Good on you, Maxi. Uh oh. The fence just stopped. Jase, 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 we got a problem, mate. We've got a problem. What's up? The fence just ran out. I'm lost. What? Yep, it's no fence. Where do we go now? So now I'm half in Queensland and half in Northern Territory. That's pretty cool. Smoko, mate. Smoko time, buddy. Coffee time. Coffee time. Ah. What happened to your cappuccino machine in the van? <laughs> All gone, eh? <laughs> I can't remember where I put that thing. I forgot. Well, I'm going to go. I found some bush tucker over here, mate. I'm going to go and get some. Yeah, you go have your bush tucker. I'm going to have, <laughs> I'm going to have my bush tucker. All right. OK. You don't want any me bu bush bubble gum? Yeah, no, I'm good. This is what I'm looking for. This one's absolutely chockers with what I'm going to call bush bubble gum. That's not what they call it, but I reckon it's bush bubble gum. Now, this here is obviously the sap coming out of the tree. Now, a lot of the time, the sap will come out because a grub or a borer will get in there, and then where it makes a hole, the sap dribbles out. So if I were to live in the bush here, I could actually put marks or cuts in the tree, in the, the trunk of the tree, and I could actually get it to weep out and come and collect it on a regular basis. It's quite pliable. Look at that. It's like bubblegum. Basically, hours of fun, but you can actually eat it. Now, it tastes like, um, and this is, a, this is a really good analogy here. Have you ever sucked a jelly bean to the point you got to just the jelly? That's what this tastes like. But, all right, kids, don't just go out there and start ripping the uh, sap off um, any old tree you see. Please don't, because could be poisonous. Here, yeah, mate, I've got some bush bubble gum for you. You can try it. Did you find some? Yeah. Wow, well, that's cool looking stuff. Some bits are a bit chewy. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Bush bubble gum. Where the hell did you find that? Uh, there's a little tree over there. There's heaps of it. Show us. Just over that way. That one over there, mate. That's, see, oh, that's... hang on. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> Oh, there's a what snake there. What the hell are you? That's an olive python, that one, python, yeah. Jeez, at that distance and that colour, he looks a bit deadly, doesn't he? He looks like a, one of those brown snakes or a taipan or something. He's friendly. Ooh, are you feisty? Are you feisty? Yeah, he's friendly. He's all good. He's not lashing out. You can pretty much tell straight away if they're going to be friendly or not. As soon as you touch them. They either strike at you or they don't. He's got a lot of ticks on him too. Look at that, he's covered in them. Hmm, he is too. I'll be bugged. You better put him out of the road, mate. Well, that's where he was going, on his merry way. Here he goes. Happy days. If you didn't know any different, that looks like a very venomous snake crawling through the grass. See that polished glint on the skin? Mm. That gives him away straight away. And then, of course, the head. Yeah, but it's that so silver good. glint with the sun. That sort of rainbowy sort of reflection. That's, that's the olive python through and through. Bob of cows up here. Just doing a bit of mustering at the moment. Here it is, mate. He's the crossing. Oh, it's very pretty. Oh, look at that. That's pretty awesome, mate. That's fresh water, too. And here I was thinking there's going to be this saltwater creek. Yep. 
It was bog- so the, close. The bogging from hell. Look, it's even got a rocky bottom to it. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a causeway. It is. It's a natural causeway. I've had a bad year, mate, but I'm going in. I need a tub. Oh, it takes your breath away. We figure this little creek deserves a quick flick. Got him. Got a little sooty. <laughs> Look at you, you big fat thing. Got him, he liked that softy. Look at that, that's a fat sooty grunner. They're almost like the uh, mangrove jack of the fresh water. Because they, they dominate the fresh water. They don't like to go into the salt. All right, buddy, I'll let you go, eh? There you go, look at that. He's happy. We discovered before that we were out of fence line. Now we are out of track. Look, that's as far as the track goes. You want me to go in front? Yeah, I reckon I. If you go in front and mow down. This is what we designed it for. Yeah, I can see it. I can see what is the track. We can still make out the cleared line from the last survey in 1986. Small trees are now encroaching on the gap. How you going back there, mate? Good buddy, all good. Just got to keep an eye on the top corners of my van through the trees, but other than that, all good. All right, copy that. Um, so there's a little bit more of a section up here. We got a dunk, and then I think I can see a clear way out. Well, so far so good. I see the salt pans. I see the salt pans. You sort of go out the front, mate. Be a lot easier. I've done all the bush work. Now it's your turn to do all the. Um, where it's soft work. Copying that. All right, so see that big clearing in front of you? If you start to track along that now, that's going to get you sort of following a big sort of salt thing. So to your left, mate, to your left, to your left, start tracking. So far, this is great going. No man, oi, where are you taking me on bog? You not. Went straight down there. So again, mud flats are not a good place to be. And more problems mount. We have done an airline somewhere. That's not good. You've broken an airline going through the bush. And have now lost four wheel drive. I'll bring the air pressure up first. And four wheel drive. That's full dip lock. I can hear it, but I can't find it. It's up here somewhere. Um, let's um, drop the air out of these tyres and get rid of this trailer, eh? And see if we can't drive out with tracks under all four wheels. Yep. These things have run flats in them. There's no bottom to this when you go through it. Really concerned if we get this thing really bogged, it will never get it out. And this is where it'll live. Oh man, I'm just gonna have to build up air pressure. I'm gonna load up the winch and then I've got to drive off that a little bit, all right? Copy that. Oh, he's popped out of the hole. I'm just gonna hold it there for a second and have a look at these tracks. Oh, I can see it from here, you're good. Let me disconnect the winch and then you can like zoom straight out. Hang on. Happy about that? Very happy about that, mate. But? Very happy. <laughs> Let's not celebrate too much before this winch away. Good trailer. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a trailer there, but there's not a 12 ton Unimog no, looking like it's going to get bogged in the past. Like, you know how that stuff works. You coming? She's coming. Come on, baby. I'll do I reckon. Just lift her up with a high lift jack and happy days. Whoop. Oh, I've learned my lesson. Don't follow me across the salt flats. Don't follow Simon. <sighs> yeah, I'm just going to go over to where the trees are. So, 
Simon tracks straight across to set up camp. The Mog, on the other hand, needs to stay on hard ground. I end up rolling into camp about an hour later. I'm glad we got it out. With the tracks under, the winch, the whole thing, it just, it just sort of came out, disconnect the trailer. Thank God for that, I'm beat, I've had enough. Introducing the new and improved home of Australian adventure, Unleashed TV. A growing library of content featuring the best of yeah. aerial driving, woo, fishing, woo. touring, wood builds, bush cooking, and whatever you call this. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show All for Adventure, Unleashed, and more original series from Jason and the team. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. You can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Now with no lock-in contract. That's why Unleashed TV is the home of Australian adventure.